Hi, I'm Hui Wenlin. I'm excited to tell you about a paper of mine that recently published in the Journal of Management in Engineering with the title Corporate Social Responsibility on Disaster Resilience Issues by International Contractors. So, disaster resilience refers to the ability of the system, a community, or a society to resist, absorb, adapt to, and recover from the impact of hazards in a timely and efficient manner. Today, we live in a modern society. Our daily livings rely heavily on the functionality of the complex infrastructure systems. Disasters such as earthquakes that damage buildings, hurricanes that disrupt power and transportation systems, and even during the pandemic this time, an outage of telecommunication service would be a problem. And when these interrupted infrastructure systems are unable to bounce back to normalcy rapidly, it can bring prolonged negative social and economic impacts to the society. With the increasing complexity of hazards and their impact on society in the last decade, the construction industry is challenged on the responsibility ensuring the resilience of the built environment. Not only that, the construction professionals are responsible for incorporating disaster risk reduction measures into the planning, design, construction, and operation of the infrastructure. In the past events such as September 11, Hurricane Katrina, or the pandemic in Wuhan, contractors were also called to participate in the response and recovery activities. As such, the construction industry has a broader role to play in disaster resilience. So we were interested to understand what are the resilience issues relevant to the construction industry and how are these resilience issues being undertaken by the construction practitioners through CSR reporting. The research took two parts. First, we invite experts from the academy and industry to participate in a Delphi study. We adopt the concept of disaster risk management and stakeholder theories to establish a CSR resilience evaluation framework with 20 resilience issues and 46 indicators. Then we develop a semantic labeling program using Python to conduct a systematic content analysis of the CSR reports by 295 top international contractors from five regions, namely the European Union, US and Canada, Middle East, Asia, and China. By using the evaluation framework and the semantic labeling program, we were able to compare the resilience issues reported among the regions and identify the best practices in the construction industry. So we think that the main contribution of this study was to create a link between the concept and the implementation of resilience. The study review and overview of how the concept of resilience has been interpreted and practiced by the practitioners. The evaluation framework that we developed allows the contractors to evaluate the status quo of their CSR practices on resilience issues and subsequently suggests to improve CSR performance details and relevant management guidelines on disaster resilience. Contractors who recognize the need to develop resilience strategies and make improvement helps to build their competitive advantage in the international construction market and this is certainly an interest from the practitioners. And on the academic side, it's really important for the researchers and policymakers to understand what the implications are for contractors that are engaging in resilience-relevant activities, why and under what circumstances, and how can they do it better.